fighting. It's been in hockey as long as the puck has. For decades, the model of a winning team involved pounding your way to the cup. A strategy perfected by the Philadelphia Flyers and the Broad Street Bullies of the 70s. They were a team that could skate around you, but preferred to skate over you. This was long before talk of concussions ramped up. Grabs his sweater, gives him a whack, and piling on in that rainy collision, and everybody's into it. Now we get a line. Long before talk of permanent damage, both physically and mentally. Fighting is part of the game. It's, it's, it's been a part of the game. It's the nature of the game. I think it should be out of the game. And I mean, the guys that, that play hard and fight obviously think that it shouldn't be out of the game. The fans love it. The players love it. The coaches love it. Who are these mysterious people well, that don't like theory fights? that violence begets violence. Oh, yeah, I see. So it's, it comes from philosophy. <laughs> and here we go. Line brawl to start this game. And while the role of the enforcer has been under the microscope for a few years now, the culture of the game, in the large part, hasn't changed. Welcome to the NHL. That is until now. The old school breed of hockey once played here at Maple Leaf Gardens is on its way out. Teams are dumping their fighters. They're not recruiting any new ones. And it's not because of some decree from high up. Instead, it comes down to numbers. Big data has finally met hockey and analytics are changing the game. This way. To see the shift, look no further than the Leafs' Kyle Dubas, hired during the league's summer of analytics. He's old enough to be a player. Instead, he's Toronto's numbers man. Of all the people that I've met and talked to, um, he's obviously got a great appreciation and understanding of analytics, but he's also married that to the complexities and instincts you have to have when you're putting a product on the ice. Dubas made a name for himself as the general manager of the OHL's Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds, turning an average team into a winner using analytics. Who were you in high school? Were you the kid who was really good at math and passionate about hockey? I was more passionate about economics than I was uh, passionate about math and calculus and advanced functions. In just a few months with the Leafs, he's already formed an analytics department built around a mathematician, a sports journalist, and a chemical engineer. He's good that drive by Kyle and his team took a look at the trends of individual plays. Shoots it through the lane. Puck possession. Shot quality, goals. Ice time, block shots, and much more. But fighting, when put up against the numbers, just doesn't hold up. Here we go. There's a lot of room in the game for highly competitive guys that that uh, that are that are tough players. But I think you're seeing how the way that how fast the game is and the way that it's evolving and changing. You have to be able to play and, and play a lot. With how fast it is and how much effort the players are expending, you can't have some guys playing 27 minutes a night and other guys playing three or four. That likely explains why two Leafs enforcers, Colt Noor and Fraser McLaren, were dropped from the roster. With only 12 forward spots available and an increasingly competitive league, teams are putting skilled hockey players on the ice, not one-dimensional enforcers. The simplest way to explain that is that those players are, are bad hockey players. Hockey writer James Myrtle follows the Toronto Maple Leafs, a team that led the NHL in fighting majors last season. It's paid the price, missing the playoffs for eight of the past nine years. Most of the fighters are not very good at doing the kind of things that analytics measure. They're not very good at playing in their own zone. They're not very good at playing in the neutral zone. They're not very good at generating shot attempts, which is one of the things that's been deemed important in analytics. Among the old guard in the NHL, Leafs coach Randy Carlisle is the establishment. Pay attention to what the hell's going on, please. I can get your attention another way if you want. This is serious shit right now. Right? Carlisle has always valued intangibles like heart and grit more than the numbers. 
and yet even he is buying into the new ideas analytics brings. Uh, we're going to continue to use it as a tool and we think we'd be crazy not to. But hockey clubs hardly have the technological skill or the equipment to crunch so many numbers. So that's where SAS comes in. It does this work for banks, cable and phone companies and now the Maple Leafs. But even its data wizards acknowledge there is still room for what's always been in the sport. Gut instincts. The point is there's still a need for the eyeball test. I think from my perspective, it's a little bit of both uh, applying what they already know through scouting reports, uh, through the traditional means, what, what the gut tells you, and taking the data and the information and either validating an assumption or it may lead you to challenge an assumption you have about a, a particular player. So here's the part of the story that gets tricky, the actual numbers. To understand the mass of data, you have to find a data scientist. And that's what Tim Trussell does. I can begin to see how, <laughs> looking just straight at the numbers, it's a bit mesmerizing. Unless you've got and a you PhD in hockey stats. Yeah. yeah. So the people who are away from this concentration. Here's one graph looking at the relationship between salary and performance. What, what you're seeing with this concentration is you're seeing that this means that most of the people conform to our kind of predictive line. People below this line are people based on the model who you would have predicted were being paid more, but they were beginning, their performance was, was very high based on the relative. So selling. these people are basically being underpaid. They, they're the ones that are at arbitration time, they're going to be coming for a big raise. And they know that because of the stats. If because they're doing the, the analytics. Stats. Yeah. yeah. So what does all this mean for hockey in general? It's more about skill than just size and brawn because that's essentially what you're measuring is how well can you play with the puck? And that's not always about how big you are. Sometimes it's about how smart you are, how much finesse you have, you know, how you can stick handle. Those things are becoming more important in the NHL as you know, the game gets faster and it gets away from what it used to be 10 years ago. For those enforcers who once dominated the fights, well, unless they can help score goals too, they simply won't be needed on the teams of the future. David Coleman, CBC News, Toronto.